Hi everyone, welcome to this new session of CF Level 2. Today we'll be starting with a new topic, economics. Economics as a topic is fairly basic at level 2 and in terms of the syllabus or technicality, it is a lot more easier than what economics was at level 1. In fact, one of the most detailed topics which we'll start today is directly picking from where you left at economics at level 1, which was foreign exchange currency rates. So we'll be looking at that reading today. Now, this reading by itself is not a very lengthy reading, but I'll still be splitting this session into two smaller sessions because I don't want to have one session of more than one hour because I feel like concentration would be high if we take smaller sessions. So, we'll cover up the currency exchange related calculations in the first session and then different interest parity theories and other exchange rate predicting uh, theories. We'll cover all of them in the second session. So, let's start. Firstly, the discussion will be about the foreign exchange rates itself, the intro part, a little bit of recap from level 1 and also some new details that you have to be aware of at level 2. So right away, exchange rates. When you looked at level 1, you mostly had rates like this. So let's say I say 70 rupees per dollar. Over here, it meant that you will have to pay 70 rupees if you want to purchase one dollar so which simply means one dollar can be exchanged for 70 rupees and in this notation we used to have this as price currency and this used to be the base currency logically pretty much the same concept that you covered at level one is applicable at level two as well the only sort of difference that you will end up encountering is that now you won't have a single exchange rate rather just like in the real world we experience, your syllabus will also have a double exchange rate. So the rates would be something like this, 70, 71. Over here, you will have two rates. The first rate is called bid. The second is called ask. Sometimes ask is also called offer. So if it says offer rate, don't worry about it, offer rate and ask rate mean one and the same thing. So instead of having just one set of exchange rates, for each currency set, we will have two exchange rates, one would be bid, one would be ask. Now we did have a small discussion about this bid and ask and the spread and all of those details in the portfolio management. All of that is applicable here as well, but one of the main reasons why a lot of students tend to be afraid of economics is because the questions or the calculations that we'll cover in this first session itself, they feel a little technical at times, mainly because you have two rates and the confusion comes from the fact that which one should we use in any particular calculation. So right away, I am going to give you a golden rule. Just remember this. Bid is the rate. at which dealer buys base currency. And ask is the rate at which dealer sells base currency. If you remember this rule, I can assure you not a single calculation that we'll cover in this chapter in this session going ahead will be complicated. Nothing in this chapter is complicated. Let me iterate that very clearly. It just looks complicated because you are being introduced to this kind of calculation for the first time. In fact, a lot of securities have this fixed income bonds. They are a dealer oriented securities mostly. They might also have these situations wherever you have dealers, you have bid and ask quotes. But none of our calculations in fixed income or equity or in any security have focused on this. So this as a concept is slightly new and that is what the most challenging part is. Calculation logic is not challenging. Challenging is just understanding how to use two rates instead of one. Now let's have a look at this note one more time. Bid is the rate at which dealer will buy the base currency. In our exchange rate, dollar is the base currency. So this simply says that bid 70 is the exchange rate that the dealer will use when he has to buy dollars, which means you have dollars 
dealer as a counterparty always assume you to be the investor and dealer to be a counterparty i have dollars i want to sell dollars to the dealer if i am the party which is selling dealer must be the party which is buying and dealer will buy the base currency at bid rate similarly dealer when he has to sell dollars let's say i went to dealer saying that i want to purchase dollars the investor wants to purchase dealer will sell dollars he will sell dollars at ask rate at a rate of 71 the difference between these two is called spread and this is pretty much sort of the benefit or the profit that the dealer intends to earn larger the spread the more profit for dealer however in the real world there are a lot of elements that decide how big the spread would be for example the two currencies which are in the exchange code over here i have rupees and dollars and there's a lot of transactions happening between uh, imports and exports specifically for a country like india where a lot of our imports and exports are valued in dollars so there is a hefty bit of demand for both the currencies but if i take a combination of two currencies which are not in as much demand then there won't be as much investors or market participants and as such liquidity will be low and the dealer would then have to charge higher spreads to maintain his profits. So it depends on currency, it depends on interest rates of different countries, it depends on what the situation is in terms of trade. If the trade is happening very regularly between the two currencies, I'm not saying between India and US. Over here, this exchange rate, while it might seem that it is Indian rupees and US dollars, in real world, any transaction that happens in dollars would end up affecting this particular rate. Even though that transaction might not be with a US based entity, if a transaction is being done by an Indian person in US dollars, that would affect this exchange rate. So this rate is simply two currencies and how much the trade is in both of those currencies, how much the demand is for those currencies, how much the liquidity is, all of those would be factors that decide the spread of the currency. So just keep in mind, this is the rule you have to be aware of. In any given question, whatever the situation it presents in front of you, convert each element of the question from the perspective of dealer, then decide which rate to use. So if a question simply says that you want to sell dollars, first convert this transaction from the perspective of dealers, if I am selling, dealer must want to buy. Then come back to this rule and decide which exchange rate to use. I promise you, if you do that, initially it will take time, first 5-10 questions. But once you get a hang of it, you won't make mistakes. And trust me, economics, because of these two rates, this is an easy concept to understand logically. This is also one of the easiest ones to make mistakes because in two or three exchange rates, if, our, if you have two or three exchange rates, each of them have bid and ask. It is very easy to take just one value wrong and have a very different answer. So I hope the basics are clear. Let's have a discussion about cross rates. The next topic we have at hand is cross rates. Now cross rates as a topic, as a concept is exactly what it was at level one. So the idea of cross rates was that if we go with the assumption of no arbitrage, what should be currency exchange rate in case we have multiple rates available to us for example i give you the exchange rate let's say rupee or dollar and i also give you an exchange rate dollar per pound cross rates as a concept it simply said that if we have these two rates a person that has rupee and wants pounds, what he can do is he can first convert rupees into dollars and then convert dollars into pounds. And for there to be no arbitrage, whatever money he has over here, X, this amount of money should be exactly same as how much money he had if there was a direct way of converting my rupees into pounds. So no arbitrage simply says that whether you follow the first route or the second route to convert rupees into pounds, your benefit should be same. So basically by that logic, this exchange rate could be calculated as rupee per dollar multiplied with dollar per pound. 
So this was from your level one, and this is still the concept at level two as well. So this is still the concept. However, one thing that has changed, as I said, conceptually economics is pretty much same as it was at level one, but the only change that we have is that instead of one currency rates, we have two, which means if this is bid, then these will also have to be bid. And for ask rate, these will also have to be ask rates. This is the only change that now instead of using cross rates just to get one single rate, you now have to use them first using bid rates to get the bid rate and then ask rates using ask rates of the other two currency exchange. Aside from this, there is one small complication that you also have to be aware of, which is called indirect quote. Now, if you remember at level one, if you were given rupees by dollar as 70, you can convert this into dollars by rupee as one by 70. This was basically conversion of a quote from direct to indirect. Now, I'm not going to get into a complication how we decide what is direct or what is indirect because it doesn't matter for the purpose of what we have to discuss. But we were able to convert the quote directly by uh, doing a reciprocal of it. But the issue is now we don't have one exchange rate. Now we have two exchange rates. So let's say the quotation for rupee per dollar is given as 70, 71. Now outright, we have to convert this to dollar by rupee. The biggest issue is that we cannot directly say 1 by 70, 1 by 70. If you do this, this is wrong. And there's a very specific reason for that. If I do this calculation, you'll notice the bid rate will come out higher than the ask rate, which is not a practical solution. Why? Because imagine a situation where you have a dealer who is buying at a higher price price and then selling at a lower price. That will not exist in the real world. So one of the reasons why we can't have this is because it doesn't make sense for the bid rate to be less than the ask rate. Ask always has to be higher because that is when the dealer will do profits. And dealer is not in the business of charity. He is in the business of making profits. So if I actually want to incorporate the real world situation and how we do the conversions, the conversion is done with one specific change. Instead of directly reciprocating, we also do a switch around. This will be correct. Now I have a bid rate which would be lower than the ask rate. So the issue we had with the previous method that has been resolved. But still, a few students might be thinking that this doesn't make sense. Well, remember the golden rule that we wrote down. We'll apply that itself. The first transaction we had in our original rate where we used the exchange rate of 70 was when dealer was buying dollars and selling rupees. If you look at the alternate way of writing this quotation, the reason why 1 by 70 is used as an ask is because now for the same transaction of dealers selling rupees and buying dollars, it becomes an ask because now we have to look at this transaction in context of rupees. So transaction wise, both of these are exactly same. Where dollar is being bought, rupee is being sold. This is what the dealer is doing in both of these situations. But the reason why in one quotation it is bid and in the other it becomes ask is because if you remember that rule, that rule was the bid and ask are the rates at which dealer would deal in the base currency. Because the base currency is changing, what earlier was bought is now to convert into sell. Earlier dollar was being bought and dollar was the base currency. So we looked at this as the priority. Now also dollar is being bought, but now the base currency is rupee and rupee is being sold. So transaction is same, 
but we look at bid and ask rates in context of base currency and base currency is changing that's why the direction will change so i hope both the logics why it always should be a situation that bid is less than ask i hope that logic is also clear and this sort of conceptual logic is also clear for the exams if you're comfortable with either logic you can go with that the easiest one to remember is that the bid should always be lower than ask because otherwise the dealer would not be in business so i hope all of that is clear now we will combine all of these to understand with an example the concept of triangular arbitrage